made of Hollywood. The horror thriller, The First Omen, starring Nell Tiger Free, is made in Hollywood. I love The Omen, I love horror, I love all things weird and wonderful, and so getting to do this movie has been a real dream for me, honestly. It's like all my favorite things combined, so I feel very lucky to be a part of this. Also on today's show, Olivia Coleman and Jesse Buckley find themselves on opposite sides of a foul-mouthed caper in the comedy Wicked Little Letters. I just thought it was going to be so much fun and I get to go to work with somebody that I love with all my heart. Plus, the crime drama Dogman features Caleb Landry Jones, Rudy Mancuso and Camilla Mendez star in the romantic comedy Musica, also Ty Sheridan and Sean Penn team up in the gritty thriller Asphalt City. This week on Made in Hollywood. Made in Hollywood. A young woman devoting her life to the church uncovers a terrifying secret in the prequel chapter of the iconic horror franchise, The First Omen, starring Nell Tiger Free. You don't have to be afraid. God has great plans for you. This child is his way. I love The Omen, I love horror, I love all things weird and wonderful, and so getting to do this movie has been a real dream for me, honestly. It's like all my favorite things combined, so I feel very lucky to be a part of this. There's this girl at the orphanage. I think that she really needs someone to look out for her. I remember like almost looking at it initially like from a fan's point of view, like not something that I was reading for like potential work. It was more just like, what are they gonna do with like the prequel to The Omen? This was before I was signed on, I read the script. One of the things that was so exciting about this script was, was the ending and how it dovetails into the 1976 version because we've all been wondering where Damien comes from for so long, you know? So knowing that that's where we're ending is with that answer was so great because it gave us all this real estate to say like, okay, this is how, but why? I just thought it was a great idea and a great expansion on the the universe, the omenverse, you know, it, it just felt like it worked. And then I was like, oh God, I really hope they let me do this movie. You must be very careful, Margaret. Bad things will start to happen around her, evil things. It's all for you, no, don't. She's in every single scene almost. She goes through this extreme emotional journey where she starts in heaven and then descends into hell. And when we met now, she just exudes that. She just got more wonderful as the days went by. And her directorial style is so hands-on and so respectful and so like, she values every opinion and every thought that you have. It's not like, you know, okay, do one for you and do one for me, take-wise, you know, which happens all the time, where it's like you're kind of at odds with what you think it should be. It's always collaborative every time. This church has maintained power for thousands of years. They will stop at nothing to keep it that way. I grew up on, on films from the 70s and the horror films from the 70s, and, and something that I love about those films is that they take their time and you really get to settle into the world, understand the parameters of the world, and also fall in love with these people. That also is, is when it comes to the, the horror and the scare, you, know, get, you get so much suspense in those films. And I think that's something that we really wanted to bring to this movie. How do you control people who no longer believe? You create something to fear. I believe the girl is to be the mother. Mother of, of what? I love being pushed like that, and I love being challenged, and I, I love it when those days were my favorite days, you know, the days where I'm doing the most intense, crazy stuff, those, those are the days I was most looking forward to. And emotionally, you can't help what happens after, you can't really help what happens before, you can only focus on what's going on during. And during, if it felt real, then you push it and you just go for it, and you let it run, you let it take over you. If you can't stop crying, great, keep it going, you know? And I love that too, I'm a weirdo. I, the, the worst, it seems like I'm, the worst time it looks like I'm having on screen, the best time I'm having in, in my heart. <laughs> you don't have to be afraid. This child is his way.
A series of profane correspondence sends a quaint seaside town into an uproar, as Olivia Coleman and Jesse Buckley star in the farcical crime comedy, Wicked Little Letters. The mystery of the obscene Little Hampton letter is causing widespread distress across the nation. When the script arrived, Johnny Sweet's uh, beautiful, funny script, he had a black and white photo of Edith and Rose, I think, on the front of it. And I thought, ooh. And reading it going, no, can't be, and Googling at the same time. The first time I read it, I had no clue. I just thought it was some crazy idea that Johnny Sweet had come up with. So then to learn that it was not only based on a true story, but most of all the crazy things that happened really did happen. Truth is stranger than fiction, and I just love that you know, it's a story that you couldn't write. You feel certain that Rose Gooding's guilty. I can't see why they think it's me. Some of the virgin making history here. <laughs> I was a bit roisterous once or twice. I just thought it was going to be so much fun, and I get to go to work with somebody that I love with all my heart and deeply think she is the best actress in the world. <laughs> so um, I just knew She's that it would so be delirious. a great... <laughs> I just knew it would be a great, uh, fun time. Rose Gooding allegedly harassed a pretty young Christian woman. What's the evidence? Larry, you workers! Similarities in the language. It's set in 1920s in a little village called Little Hampton. And I guess the kind of nature of this sensational story that happened in real life and that it came from letter writing and a kind of poison pen letter gone viral. What is different to then to now is that it was letters, whereas nowadays we live in a world where trolling and an online kind of anonymous poison pen letter happens around us all the time. It was really fun playing someone who's real um, and sort of someone who, more importantly, was experiencing something that no other woman had for the first time. I mean, what a hero and quite fun to play like a Agatha Christie type detective, so being the hero of the movie and solving crimes, like it's really fun. I'm not standing for it. Will you catch them in the act? But women, we're not what people think we are. We don't all sit in a parlor drinking tea and, <laughs> you know, talking about what we're going to cook for our husband's dinners. Like we have got we, what we want is freedom to have autonomy of our bodies and minds and get to choose the life that we want to live. And I think that was exactly the same back in the 1920s. Nobody swears like that. What would you say? You look like Queen Victoria shoved <gasps> up her. You daft old... <sighs> Coming up, Caleb Landry Jones stars in the crime thriller Dogman and the romantic comedy Musica features Rudy Mancuso and Camilla Mendez. To find out where to watch any movie, check out moviephone.com. Find it, watch it. Somehow, I think it's a real testament to Luke and, and, and um, him as a director um, to be able to work with 120 something dogs. A troubled outsider discovers justice and salvation through a bond with man's best friend as Caleb Landry Jones stars in the crime thriller, Dogman. My colleagues are struggling to get a handle on you. They would like to know who you are. JoJo is just coming off of another job, right? Oh yeah, I was Civil like War. The day before? Yeah, flew into Paris. Yeah, <laughs> and we had uh, three days, I think. Three days to shoot our yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and we'd never met each other. Some stuff from the very first scene is the first time we met or the first time we looked at each other. You have any children, Douglas? Hundreds. Dogs have a real sense of family. Luke was so smart to do that. Like, he wouldn't let us meet each other until our first scene. And so my first time meeting Caleb was my first time meeting Douglas. Then when he said cut, I was like, hey, I'm JoJo. He's like, hey, I'm Caleb. <laughs> Dogs have beauty without vanity, force without insolence, bravery without ferocity, and all the virtues of humans have without any of the vices. Honestly, my preparation came a lot through Caleb <laughs> because as a fan of his work, I was like, oh, he's gonna do something interesting with this. But with humans, the weak and cowardly always find a way to survive. But there were over 120-something dogs total uh, for the whole film. Somehow, I think it's a real testament to Luke and, and, and um, him as a director um, to be able to work 
with 120 something dogs yeah. and be able to make it work. The weak were immediately eliminated, devoured by the others. And most of them were from shelters and uh, had never done a day's work in front of camera before. Oh, so. wow. Now available on your home screen. A directionless street performer struggles to balance the competing rhythms in his life as Rudy Mancuso and Camila Mendez star in the romantic comedy, Musica. Rudy, are you even listening to me? Hello? Synesthesia is a condition, it's a neurological condition. One sense will stimulate another sense involuntarily. It's not just sense that some synesthetes can smell, but they can smell numbers. Um, others can associate a personality with days of the week. The ones I associate my symptoms with are rhythmic association, misophonia, linguistic personification, which is normal with a lot of bi and trilingual individuals. For as long as I can remember, everyday regular sounds, I turn into rhythm. My character and I have had a really unique relationship with sound. I'm Rudy. What's up, Bella? For a while, I didn't know that it had a name. Um, and when I did, I started diving deeper and deeper and developing what became this story, Musica. She's different, she's beautiful, she's smart, she's oh, funny. Oh, tell me more. But now Haley, I think, wants to, wants to get back together. Tell me less. I definitely was familiar with it. I had heard um, about it through musicians that I know, because um, quite a few have it, but I hadn't heard of his kind of synesthesia or the one that he deals with the most, which is rhythmic association. Um, that one was very new to me. I knew that about the one that had to do with colors, but it was really interesting to get to know what his version of synesthesia was like through Isabella and through the process of developing the movie. Sorry, what? Sometimes it is very distracting and it's a bit torturous and hindering gets in the way of life and conversations and relationships. I definitely see moments where I can feel his attention drifting because there's like a noise in the background that's kind of pulling him away. But honestly, I don't think you actually know what you want. I'm figuring it out. Well, I know what I want. Just tell me, tell me what it is. I started with the music. So I, I had choreographed in my head and pre-written a lot of what became the set pieces in the film so that everyone involved in making it had a point of reference, a musical point of reference. And I had that music pre-written. Uh, we had demos for everything before the script was even finished. So it's exploring a multi-sensory perspective. And the best way to bring that to screen is by doing exactly that, is by multi-sensorifying everything. Oh, just give me a second. What? I'm sorry, let me just talk. Judy, I have to Can I come on? To find out where to watch any movie, Check out moviephone.com. Find it, watch it. Up next, Sean Penn and Ty Sheridan put their lives on the line in the gripping dramatic thriller, Asphalt City. The single element that got us most ex excited was really trying to convey the lives of medics. A young paramedic and his seasoned partner discover a city in crisis, one 911 call at a time, in the gritty thriller Asphalt City, starring Sean Penn and Ty Sheridan. You believe in heaven? I don't know if I believe in heaven, but I believe in hell. One, two, three. The project's been around for a really long time. Uh, it first came to me in 2018. And really, I think the single element that got us most ex excited was really trying to convey the lives of medics. And we all thought that was a really exciting story. I usually get here 10 minutes early. I like to ride with partners who do too. Yes, sir. The film, you know, is based on a novel by Shannon Burke. And it's originally set in 90s in Harlem. Our version of the movie has a much more contemporary telling. Shannon was a paramedic when he's a young guy, you know, and I thought he was really interested because it you can see through the book, it's a journey, and you go and ride with him from the first day. You can understand, you know, how it is for him to face the kind of type of violence a paramedic can, can face. 
Do it if you don't too. Go, go, go. You think these people like you? He's the new kid on the block, so to speak. He's a rookie medic. He's somebody who, you know, envisions a career in the medical field and is trying to get into med school and is, you know, wants to be a paramedic uh, to get a lot of real world experience. And he does get that very quickly. They give me about two weeks. <laughs> What's going on? 30 year old female. She just gave birth. Took some heroin for the pain. <laughs> How's the baby? They're the best, you know, they were already like when I read the, the book and then the script, I say, I won't tie, I'm on Sean. And well, I was obsessed, you know, so it took me like a few years because Sean first said, no, I don't want to act anymore. So I have to convince him and then the pandemic happened. And then so it was a long way. It was very intense. It was a very challenging film to make and very challenging roles for us playing medics. Uh, you know, it was it's very technical. You know, just watching them learn on on the job almost and just really putting these things together and then dealing with the chaos of the actual scene. You know, when you're in a scene, whether it's acting or not, it's real. You know, it's just made up circumstances with real reactions. So it was amazing to work with them. Is it worth it? It's the job. That's also a theme of the movie, you know, how the paramedic can be affected by all the violence they have to face every day. You start doing this because you want to help people. I don't want to go to the hospital. Let's go, let's get a life here. Sometimes you just end up doing the complete opposite. It, it just goes to show, you know, how much of a burden they carry. You know, the, the, these people, they carry a lot of responsibility. They're the person you call in your worst moments. I think if anything, you know, I hope, I hope the film hopes to convey that to the world and to the public, you know, and, and really uh, show them, you know, a closer look at what their lives may be like and some of the burdens that they may be carrying. You don't gotta let it inside you. You ain't got what it takes for this life, yeah. Stay tuned, there's more coming up on Made in Hollywood. Made in Hollywood. Thanks for watching Made in Hollywood, powered by Movie Phone. For more behind the screen content, check out moviephone.com. Made in Hollywood. Made in Hollywood.